this is a very quick overview of how to use Yanker. There's a lot more information on the Yanker website, but when you start off Yanker on a school computer, you'll see this window, and you're going to click Technology, then Electronics, and you're going to click OK. And when you do that, you generally even want to open something from the local, so your recently found files will be up here. These are Yanker's um, built-in uh, circuit designs, but usually you want to do something new, so you go new like this, and you end up with a white screen with a um, list of components on. If the list of components isn't there, if it's gone, it's this object button down the bottom. The first thing I would do is I would make the object um, menu much longer, so you've got space to see it. And the second thing I'd do is make sure that this object menu is actually on the white part of the background. If you use the widescreen computers in the lab, then the white background has borders down each side, and this object menu often ends up in those borders, in which case Yenka behaves differently, and it puts a squared background and components don't look correct. So you always start with the, um, the, the objects menu actually on the white background that you're working on. You can make it very slightly narrower as well. Maybe you can't. Right, so I'm going to design a few different circuits. I'm going to start off with a 555 timer circuit, and then I'm going to build a logic circuit, and I'll just talk my way through all the various different features of Yenka, and hopefully it will give you a, a heads up of how to go about using it. So I'm going to start off with some lab equipment. I'm going to pick a power supply. I'm going to pick a 9 volt voltage rail and a 0 volt voltage rail. I can edit this and make it any value I like. I can make this negative if I want to. Okay, I could use a ground instead of zero volts, but I'm not going to. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close that. I'm going to go and look at the electronic components. I'm going to go to digital processing, and there's actually a 555 folder here. So I click on my 555, and I drag my 555 chip into the middle of the board. And to wire stuff up, I just simply drag wires around, and I make sure that the connections go black. If they go red, they're just overlapping. So make sure they actually go black. They should have a little dot when they're connected. I'm going to connect my pin 1 to 0 volts. And I'm going to take a capacitor. Now this is an electrolytic capacitor, so I actually want to go and find analog processing, passive components because they don't need a power supply, a regular small capacitor. And the value should be 100 ohms. So I've clicked on the value and just changed it. I could also click on the units and change them if I wanted to. and then I'm just dragging the wires around to wire it up. So that's my capacitor connector pin 5. I'm going to go back to my 5-5 timer circuit. I've got a resistor here, which I'll make 1K. I've got another resistor here, which I'll make 10K. And I've got a capacitor here, which I'm going to leave as, well, I'm going to make into 22 microfarads, actually. Okay, and I'm going to connect all these together. Okay, and then these ones go to pin 6 and pin 2, so I'm going to um, connect them together, and the other one goes up to pin 7, and what you'll see is immediately it starts working. If you want it to be less annoying, press the pause button, press the pause button again to get it working. For my LED, I need to go to the output section. I want to use light. I'm going to take a resistor, which is handily there and a light emitting diode. If I want to turn my resistor over, I grab a little circle. That enables me to put components horizontally. I'm going to wire up the LED. I'm going to see there that I have a nice flashing LED. So everything's good so far, or absolutely hunky-dory super duper. So that's my 555 circuit built. If I wanted to change any of these tracks, then if you click on them, you get little handles, so you can move them around, so it makes it quite nice and easy. If I make the resistor 10 times smaller, 1K, then you see the LED flashes an awful lot faster. If I make the capacitor 1,000 times smaller, 22 nanofarads, then you'll see that it appears to have no effect, but it does have an effect. Yenka changes its time scale, so you can always see what's happening, so don't believe the timing on Yenka. It might just be making it up. So I'm going to make this 100 now. And now we have a nice, slow, flashing light like this. 
If we want to look at the output, we can go to the presentation tools. We can actually put instructions, questions, pictures, text. But one that you all like to use um, is the graph. Now if I take graph tool like this, and it's automatically got time along the bottom, you can change that. I take my target and attach it to somewhere. So I'm going to attach it to the output of the chip. And what you should find is that as it runs, oop, that didn't do it. I need to click property, sorry. I'm going to click voltage. And as it runs, it draws you the graph of the output. You can scale it vertically and horizontally. So that is effectively your oscilloscope trace. So you can see what's happening, make sure everything's correct. Okay, so that's the 555 A stable circuit. Let's throw that away. So I'm going to select everything and press delete. Now let's go and build ourselves a logic circuit. So what we'll do is put the presentation tools away, put the outputs away for now. We're going to go and look at some uh, integrated circuits. We're going to go and look at the, hold on, I'm lost. Digital processing, not integrated circuits, my bad. We're going to go look at the digital processing, 4000 series, logic gates, and I'm going to go and choose an AND gate. Nice and simple. No power supply is shown. So what I could do is I could wire up switches and resistors like we normally do, but in actual fact, the easiest thing to do is to wire up logic indicators for my LEDs and wire up um, push buttons. This push button is just one that you just press, so it let go. This push button is a latching one. So what latching means is you press it and you hold it. So I can wire these up to my logic gate. So if I press this one, it comes on. If I press this one, then the output comes on as you would expect, which is great. And the little red bar meter show me the voltages. Now if I take the logic indicator away and I go back and put on my output, I've been put on my light emitting diode, and I put on my resistor, and I put on my naught volt section, which is in the power supply section, remember? Okay, and now when I press the button, you see the LED is very faint, it's not very good. And that's because the chips are all designed to run at 5 volts, but the LEDs are expecting a slightly um, bigger power supply. They're, the simulation makes them bright when they're used with a higher current. So let's see how we can fix that. Well, we right click on the screen, we go to properties, we go to electronics, okay, we go to supply voltages, and we make the 4000 series supply voltage 9 volts, which is what we're using it at. So that's setting the supply voltage for this AND gate here to be 9 volts. And now when I press the button, my LED is nice and bright because it's getting enough voltage. Okay, so that's quite good. Um, sometimes things blow up if you do this to them. So you make the voltages high and things blow up. In that case, you can go to Properties, Electronics, Simulation, and you can make objects indestructible, which is quite good fun. Okay, if I look at my meters, they're all set to auto range, which is fine. If I go to my appearance, I'm showing bar voltmeters. I could show logic levels, in which case I get 0, 0, 0, 0. Press this one because 1. Okay, the input is X because the input is slightly lower than logic 1, so it doesn't know what to make it. Okay, here's my other input. There you go. The other thing I can do with the properties is I can go to the electronics meters, no, sorry, not meters, electronics appearance, and I can actually show the pin numbers. So what I can show there is pin one, two, and three on the chip. So there's an awful lot of stuff you can do with Yenka. Okay, if I wanted to wire up um, a counter, just trying to find one. Okay, so I'm going to go and find a Schmidt trigger. No, I'm not. I'm going to go and find a flip flop. I'm going to find a D type flip flop just here, like this. And what I can do with a D type flip flop is instead of having a push button, I can use a um, variable input. So in the logic section, I have a clock input so like this. So what's a clock input? It's just constantly going on and off. Okay, and again, I can measure it with an oscilloscope. Or if I don't want to do that, what I could do is I get rid of that 
and I get my signal generator and my signal generator right click on it properties I could make it have a square wave okay I can give it a frequency and a peak voltage so I may as well make peak voltage 9 because that's what it's going to be doing and I can connect that to my clock but it doesn't seem to do anything and the reason it doesn't seem to do anything is because I also need to connect the other side of the signal generator to ground to zero I build my counter I can do Notice I don't have to connect set and reset to ground, but it's good practice too. So I'm going to take set and reset down to ground. And there is my D-type flip-flop wired up with a signal generator as the input. Okay, I don't know if there's much else I need to show you really. Pretty well, you can find everything else yourself. Um, just have a good look around. The output is the um, output you'd expect. The inputs are a bit different. So if I go to the input section, what you end up with is all your switches just here, different types of switches, and then different types of sensors. So there's your LDR with and without the lamp, thermistor, etc. etc. Also, your potentiometer is in the input section for use of the op-amp circuits.